Hello fellow intelligent investors, my name is René Zellman and in my last video I discussed how short selling works and what Buffett thinks of short selling. I outlined the reversed risk reward profile of shorting and the risk of a short squeeze. And in the comment section of this video, one of my viewers asked how a stock can have a short interest over 100%. He was clearly referring to GameStop because short positions at one point made up an impossible 140% of GameStop's float, the highest level for any equity worldwide. So in this video I will explain how in the world a stock's short interest can exceed 100%, which seems completely absurd at first. Let's get started. Have you ever wondered how you can make your hard-earned money work for you? Have you ever dreamed of building generational wealth and leaving a legacy? My name is René Zellman and I'll teach you how you can manage and invest your money with confidence, a long-term vision and without losing your mind. Join me on my journey of intelligent investing and learn how smart people can compound their money effectively and accumulate wealth. All right, so the recent stock surge of GameStop and AMC Entertainment Holdings has certainly led to an increased interest in the practice of short selling. And it seems like more and more people have finally understood how short selling actually works. But as I pointed out in the, in the introduction of this video, there's still a lot of confu confusion about whether a stock can have more than 100% of its shares shorted. The plain and simple answer is yes, that is indeed possible. But how can you short more than 100% of a stock's total shares outstanding? Well, to truly understand this phenomenon, we first need to understand how short selling works. So I can only encourage you to take a look at my first video on short selling. I'll add a link to that and to the description box below. But for the purpose of this video, let me just one more time show you the visualization that I included in this initial short selling video. As you can see, essentially the short seller borrows shares from his broker sells the shares on the open market and then buys the shares back at some point in the future, ideally at a lower price, so that he can then return the shares to the broker. And common sense will tell us that in order to borrow a stock, the person lending it to you must own it. And if that were the case, then it would be impossible that more than 100% of a company's stock can be shorted. Once all the shares have been borrowed, there simply aren't any more shares available for short, for short sellers to get. Hmm. So let me share two explanations that could explain why short positions can indeed make up more than 100% of a company's float. The first explanation is easy. If the stock is in short supply, finding shares to borrow can be quite difficult sometimes. And that's when the practice of naked short selling comes into play. Short sales are considered naked when securities or shares are sold without first being borrowed. So when someone makes a naked short sale, he or she is basically selling something that she, he or she doesn't have, at least not yet. Because what's important to notice here is that the shares sold short must be delivered to the buyer within three business days. Otherwise, a failure to deliver results and the transaction is canceled. To give you a practical example here, let's, let's assume Daniel sells short 10 shares of company X, even though he couldn't borrow the shares to sell from his broker. He essentially hopes for a quick decline in the share price of the stock of company X, so that he can close out his short sale with a purchase of 10 shares at a lower market price that he can then deliver to the buyer before the three day time limit is up. He's essentially trying to square out his position before it is discovered that he was selling shares that he did not actually possess. However, and that's the good news, naked short selling is illegal in the United States. It was prohibited by the SEC, so the Securities and Exchange Commission, after the 2008 financial crisis. So that's why this line of reasoning cannot explain the high short interest in GameStop a short interest that exceeded 100%. Or well, at least in theory, this shouldn't be one of the explanations as naked short selling is illegal. But when I conducted some research for this video actually, I have read that there are some doubts, re doubts regarding the effectiveness of the SEC ban on the practice of short selling. And it is occasionally claimed that while the ban exists on paper, it is often not enforced. 
So clearly investigations will likely show whether any naked short selling caused the excessively high levels of short interest in GameStop's stock. Now before we get to the second explanation, I just wanted to let you know that you could help me reach more people and grow the channel more quickly if you could just very quickly hit the like button of this video or leave a comment. And obviously subscribing to my channel would also be much appreciated. So let's assume that this first explanation, naked short selling, cannot be used to explain the high short interest for some US listed securities. So let me share another explanation that can theoretically explain how short interest can exceed 100%. Well, as I will show in a second, the same shares may end up getting borrowed or sold twice. In a way they are lent and then relent. And again, I think we can best illustrate this with an example. Let's consider four investors, Daniel, Felix, Christina and Rita. Christina owned shares of GameStop and in the custom agreement she signed when opening her brokerage account, she allowed her broker, broker A, to lend her shares to short sellers. So her broker lends her 10 GameStop shares to Daniel, who subsequently sells those borrowed shares in hopes that GameStop's share price will fall. Another investor called Felix ends up buying these borrowed shares from Daniel. Now what's important to notice is that Felix does not know that those shares have been borrowed from Christina. To him they are just like any other shares he can buy in his brokerage account. If Felix now has a similar custom agreement with his broker, broker B, like Christina has with her broker A, then Felix's broker can lend out those shares to yet another investor. Let's call this investor Rita. Rita too believes that GameStop's stock is destined to drop in the near future and borrows the shares from her broker to then sell them on the open market. Now I guess you get the idea. In fact, this chain can theoretically continue infinitely. Put in a nutshell, the owner lent the shares to someone, who sold it to someone, who lent it to someone, and so on and so forth. If this happens somewhat frequently, the total short interest can eventually be higher than the number of available shares. And again, I would like to illustrate this with, with an example. Let us say there are only 10 outstanding shares of company X. And these shares are held by Christina. Daniel comes in, borrows these 10 shares and short sells them to Felix. In this case, the total number of outstanding shares would be 10 and the short interest would be 100%. When Rita comes in and short sells the 10 shares to another investor, the short interest would become 200% as the number of outstanding shares is still 10. Based on my research, this second scenario, in contrast to the short selling practice, which is illegal, is both feasible and legal. I can see why that whole process is confusing at first and you might have to rewatch parts of the video. But that's because the idea of borrowing the same shares twice seems quite strange. It, it's quite illogical, I would say. And if you start considering the implications of this, I think it's also quite easy to see the risk in such a situation. And the GameStop short squeeze in early 2021 has highlighted this. And it has shown that this often does not end well and can lead to very sharp stock price increases. Now you might be wondering whether your broker can lend out shares you own to short sellers too. And without asking you. Well, what you need to do here is to take a look at your customer agreement to figure out if that's the case. But honestly, I think it's quite likely that you have agreed to, that, to this without knowing. For the sake of this video, for instance, I looked at the customer agreement of Robin Hood. And here's what it says somewhere in this wall of text that usually no customer ever reads. Any securities in my margin or short account may be borrowed by you or lent to others. So I'd say this is one of these opaque aspects of the brokerage industry. And this opacity adds to the profitability of brokerage firms. And this profitability, profitability in turn is one of the reasons why brokers can offer you free commissions. Brokers actually routinely lend out their customer shares without them actually knowing. And they profit from the stock borrowing fees uh, subsequently, of course. So is there anything you can do to stop this? Well, what you can try to do is to just send an email to the customer service of your broker. I actually came across the following template on Twitter 
and that might be useful for you here. I have also read that you can direct the broker to register the shares in your own name rather than what is referred to as in street name. The downside of this direct reg registration is that it requires more work and for many investors it will be less convenient than holding shares in street name. It's also not available for all the stocks by the way. And maybe on a side note, if you know any other ways to prevent your long positions from being borrowed, please share your ideas in the comments down below. Now based on what happened with GameStop's stock. One important question is certainly whether the SEC needs to tighten the stock borrowing rules. It doesn't make sense to me that the short interest can exceed 100%. And obviously there need to be investigations regarding the practice of short selling. So the illegal practice of selling short stocks without first borrowing the security. And lastly, I just want to stress again that brokers often claim that they offer free trading. That claim is often false and can sometimes be misleading. And with that being said, may your finances and investments prosper. Good luck. Uh -huh.